In this video, I'm going to show you how I make over $10,000 a month trading stocks and options without having to be a day trader. I'm also going to share with you the details of two trades we did last month that I think you'll be able to learn something from. One of them was some cash secure put options that we sold that paid us an over 40% annualized return. The return is great, but what I really want to share with you is how we went about entering this trade. I think that's what will really help you with your trades. The other position I'm going to talk about is in Meta Platforms, formerly known as Facebook. This is a position that went against us in a really big way. I'm going to show you how we adjusted that Facebook position and what our plans are moving forward. These two trades will help you see how you can use selling options to generate awesome cash flow and return in your account. Here you see every option trade we did last month in February. The red boxes are the trades that we're going to talk about in this video. And I encourage you to stay tuned in until the very end of this video because that's where I will show you exactly how much cash flow we put into our pocket by selling options as well as the return that we received on our capital and margin requirement. The first thing I want to tell you about is in the company formerly known as Facebook. As you may know, on February 2nd, Facebook came out with earnings and news that disappoint the market. Typically, I try to avoid trading options through earnings. However, the challenge with this Facebook position is that as you can see here, we started trading it back in November of last year. We let that position expire worthless on the third Friday of December for a full profit. Then a couple weeks later, on December 31st, with Facebook having recently made a new higher high on the daily chart, I saw that it was coming back down to its moving averages. Those moving averages had previously served as support for it. So we took advantage of this retracement to sell a new out of the money cash secured put option just below its red 200 moving average. At this point, everything was going great. However, as you can see here, that soon changed. After hanging around that red 200 moving average for about a week, Facebook pushed lower so that on January 21st, we bought the third Friday of January 325 cash secured put option back and simultaneously rolled the strike price down by $15 to the third Friday of February 310 strike cash secured put option. In addition to rolling it down, we're also able to pocket just over $2 per share in credit. So at this point, we're still in a pretty decent shape. Now, I prefer to not trade options through earnings, but here we had a position that had moved against us, so we're trying to roll our strike prices down as we rolled them out, and in so doing, found ourselves trading this position through earnings. Now, many times, these things will work out for us. However, this one didn't. As you may know, Facebook came out with disappointing earnings and news that the market absolutely hated. Facebook dropped over 26% from 322 down to 237. Now, our position was really in trouble. Please understand that overall, we had a really good cash flow month in this account. However, on purpose, I'm picking one of the worst positions we've encountered over the past two years to help you see how you can potentially work a similar type of trade that goes against you. On February 4th, after giving a day, I realized that Facebook decline, it just wasn't some knee-jerk reaction. The stock was most likely going to continue going lower because there wasn't any kind of immediate rebound. And as a result, I began working to fix this position. So on February 4th, as you can see here, I sold a naked call option in anticipation of Facebook either being assigned to us or my eventual transformation of this cash secured put position into a poor man's covered call. We didn't collect a lot because I sold that call option pretty far out of the money at 300. I did that because I wasn't sure if Facebook was going to have a strong rebound in the coming weeks. That naked call option paid us 82 cents per share. After giving it a few more days, I decided to go ahead and add a bearish call credit spread to this position. So on February 7th, I sold the third Friday of March, 285 call option for $1.05 per share. To protect ourselves from a big upside move, I simultaneously bought the same expiration day, 375 call option for 14 cents per share. So we pocketed a net of 91 cents per share for its additional bearish call credit spread. The next day on February 8th, with the downward selling pressure appearing to remain strong, I decided there was no way that Facebook was going to rebound in time for expiration, so I switched the cash secure put option over to a poor man's covered call. My reasoning was that if Facebook continued to drop, which seemed likely, the short put option, it would lose money penny for penny. However, by switching to a poor man's covered call, the long leaps call option that we bought, since this delta was around 0.7, that option would help absorb some of the future stock decline if that happened. By selling the bearish call credit spread as well as the additional short-term call option to turn the leaps call into a poor man's covered call, we're able to reduce our call spaces and begin to repair this position. Fast forward to today, and Facebook is trading right around $2.04 per share. Since that time, once I realized that Facebook wasn't going to rebound anytime soon, I bought the third Friday of March to 85 call option back for 19 cents per share and simultaneously sold the third Friday of April 250 call option for $1.93 per share. Several days later on February 24th, which was Facebook's strongest and largest update since its gap down, I felt pretty confident that it wasn't going to reach our 250 short call option strike price, so I rolled that call option down to 225. 
that helped us pocket a nice wad of cash to continue helping to repair this position. Here is our current position in Facebook. We still own the January 2024 $200 call option. It has lost value because Facebook has declined almost $17 per share from where it was when we bought this Leaps call. However, this Leaps call is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Instead of losing $17 per share, it's only down $9.20 per share. In all, by selling naked calls and the call option that's a part of our poor man's covered call, as well as a bearish call credit spread, we've been able to pocket $792.78. If Facebook stays below our short call options, which are currently at $225 and $250 between now and the third Friday of April, we'll get to keep most or all of that cash. My plan is to continue rolling the short-term call options out and moving them up or down depending on Facebook's strength or weakness. The delta of our long leaps call option is just over 0.64. So if Facebook declines, we won't lose penny for penny. And this delta will actually move more in our favor if Facebook does continue to decline. On the other hand, if it begins to rebound, the delta will increase as the underlying stock increases. If, however, news comes out that makes me not feel comfortable anymore having a long position in Facebook, or as it's currently called, made of platforms, then at that point, I'll liquidate this position no matter what our profit or loss is. But as of right now, I'm still comfortable being long this company. It generates massive cash flow, and I believe they will continue to do that. So that's one that really went against us in a really big way. Hopefully that gave you some ideas on how you can handle positions that move against you. Now let me show you one that went our way in a really big way. It actually wasn't even our best trade last month. It was our second best trade. The reason I'm not showing you our best trade because we actually started that trade the very last days of January. Here you see the chart of CH Robinson Worldwide, ticker symbol CHRW. This is a company that transports things all over the world. It's a lot more complicated than that, but I'm going to keep it simple for you. It's a middleman for moving things around the entire planet. Back in the Great Recession, despite the overall economy getting crushed, its sales only dropped by 12.3% and they actually increased their dividend. It's been paying dividends nonstop without a reduction for 27 years. However, on February 2nd, it announced it had missed earnings by 11 cents per share. Well, the market didn't like that. So for the next several days, C.H. Robinson went from $104 per share down to $89 per share. On the day that it had this initial big gap down, I began watching it for a potential trade. I was waiting for it to begin finding support. And as a matter of fact, as you can see on February 5th in my weekly trading ideas post that I sent out to all my patrons, I rated CH Robinson a seven. That's definitely good enough for me to take a position in it that continues to find stability and the return stays high enough in the coming week. Several days later with CH Robinson appearing to be stabilizing and making higher highs on the daily chart, as well as having a nice strong green up day, I went ahead and sold our first cash secure Put option in it as you can see here. This is the actual post that I sent out to my patrons as soon as I knew that this trade went through. As I mentioned in several of my other videos, I like to enter positions slowly. I knew that if CH Robinson continued to show strength here, I will continue adding to this position if I had the capital available and the return stayed sufficient. The next day on February 10th, as you can see here, I closed out a position for a nice profit in Kroger and used that capital to add to our CH Robinson position. The following day on February 11th, CH Robinson was still showing strength, so I sold one more additional cash secured put option in it. Because we were then short three $87.5 cash secure put option contracts, that meant that we were on the hook for just over $26,000 worth of stock if this position was assigned to us. That put us right at a 2.5% position size in our overall account. So I decided to stop adding to that position. Fast forward about two and a half weeks later, and on March 1st, when CH Robinson gapped up overnight, I decided to close this position out by buying the cash secure put options back for 30 cents per share, as you can see here. Then I used that freed up capital to enter a new cash secure put option in Merck and Verizon. But that's probably a story for another time. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And while you're there, if becoming a consistently more profitable operator is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Now let me show you exactly how much cash we put in our pocket last month by selling put, covered call, and doing poor man's covered calls. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling put options, we put $7,880 cash into our pocket. Please note this amount not only includes the cost of buying the deep in the money Facebook put option back that went against us, but it also includes the cost of buying the January 2024 Leaps call option. If you add back in the cost of buying that Leaps call option, then we would have put into our pocket $13,573.70. In the orange box, you see that trading commission costs us $117.87. On the right in the purple box, you see that market data costs us $32.75. At the bottom left in the green box, you see that we collected just over $867 in dividends from three covered call positions that we're in. In all, 
as a result of buying and selling options, as well as collecting some dividends, we put a net of $14,291 cash into our pocket. If you annualize that return on the just over $1 million in capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at 18.6% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on $151,237 margin requirement was, if you don't add in the margin for the short calls we've been selling in the S&P 500, it equates to a 123% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we trade similar to the ones I showed in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you really want to take your option trading to the next level, what I mentioned in this video, it isn't enough all by itself. It's vital that you know when is the right time to sell options. In the video at the link above, I share those secrets with you. That video will take what I've just shared with you and make it even that much more powerful. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.